Hello, welcome to another video by LSX Engines, Tuning, and Marine. In this video, I've just finished installing a hydraulic roller uh, valve system. The engine, uh, as, as delivered to me, had what they call the old flat tappet cam. It had a flat lifters, no rollers. This spider wasn't here. It had just the, uh, just the lifters, the push rod, and the rock arms, and so forth. In those situations, the, uh, in those type systems, you want the lifters to spin in their bore, and the camshaft and the lifter or lifters are designed to, to accomplish that. However, this, this block was capable of rollers because it had these three bosses for these three bolts right here, and that, the, those bosses were holding down what this is called a spider, and it holds down this, this uh, spider, which in turn holds down the uh, these keepers on the lifters, which keep them spinning. There's flats on the lifter, and those flats fit inside these these keepers. And uh, so I don't have a better picture of it, but uh, maybe they may see that one. So you see the flat there, and the keeper keeps the lifters from spinning. And then the, the spider holds down the uh, the keepers. And there's uh, there's eight keepers: there's two, four, six. You see two, four, eight. Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Anyway, sixteen total lifters. So the customer, um, I told him uh, he ought to let me switch this over to a, a hydraulic roller, hydraulic roller can with roller lifters, and he agreed. And uh, so I got these lifters out of a, uh, a 350 Chevrolet engine out of a junkyard in Montgomery, Alabama. I happened to be there uh, getting some 5.7 Vortec heads for another customer, and while I was there, the, the entire valve train was there for the easy picking. So I went ahead and, and pulled it off. And uh, so I got the lifters, the spider, and the, the push rods, everything. Um, so as I'm putting this together, I wanted to explain that uh, these are used lifters, and there's no guarantee that they're going to work. So what I'm going to do is try to inspect them. As I as I I'm, I'm adjusting these valves, but as I adjust the valves, I'm accomplishing two rolls, and uh, I'm going to be inspecting these lifters to see if they are uh, if, they're, if they're stuck or not. And so let me explain how I do that. So, um, as I explained in a previous video on a, a Merc Cruiser 3.0, the way I adjust valves is I, I chase the firing order. I don't just put the put the engine at top dead center number one and adjust these valves in some other, in whatever order the manual says to. What I like to do is put it on top dead center on one or six and go from there and chase the firing order around the engine and adjust the valves that way. I know and I know for a fact that those valves should be closed in that situation. There's no doubt about it. So um, as I do that, so, so basically every time I adjust these valves, I tighten them down to where there's no play. And uh, let me see if I can get a light here. I need better light. So, so if you look down in there, you can see there's a little plunger. That, the push rod is sitting in a cup, and it's, and it's a plunger inside that hydraulic valve lifter. And uh, there's a valve that's lifted up. So as I tighten it down, when the play is taken out, that cup or that uh, plunger will be at, top, at the top of its travel right as the play is taken out. So as I continue to turn, one, the, once you get the play out to adjust the valves, you turn one additional turn. So what that does, that one turn, is it's supposed to push that plunger down about through half its travel in the lifter, and it basically preloads the lifter so it takes slack out. It allows the lifter to adjust plus or minus to, to keep your valves tight. So when you first tighten it down, the pressure from that spring right there, the, the heavy duty valve spring, will push that plunger down, um, say half its trap. And it will, uh, let me back up, I'm sorry, let me, let me back up. So when you first tighten it, the plunger doesn't drop right away. That valve there, that spring there will compress because this will stay up if it has oil, any oil residue left in it. So that will stay up. But once, it, once you tighten it one turn, this, the pressure from this big spring will force that plunger down against the oil pressure inside that plunger and it should push that plunger down, I don't know, uh, maybe a 50,000th of an inch, tenth of an inch, I'm not sure. But um, you, it sh you should see, basically what I'm saying is that that valve drops at first, but then if you give it about a minute, that valve will spring back up and that will go down. So again, when you first tighten it down, when you first tighten this nut, this nut right here down, this spring drop, that spring goes in, that stays up. But after a minute, that spring will overpower that plunger and push that plunger down through half its travel, and that's your valve adjustment. So as I'm tightening these up, if I don't see these valves, excuse me, if these valves don't 
say, say, that, say that big valve there gets compressed as I tighten it down. If I come back a minute later and it's still compressed, as a matter of fact, I'm going to go through every one of these, all eight of these cylinders and, and tighten all these valves in, in the firing order. And that's another reason I do it that way, because I, I like to uh, inspect my valves as I do it. So as I tighten them down and, the, and those val these valves here compress, when I come back and inspect them after I've done all the eight and come back and start over with the same one I started on, if that valve, this spring is not pushed back up and pushed that plunger down, you got a stuck lifter. The lifter is not compressing. And that's a sign that the lifter is either corroded inside or, or something's wrong with it because it won't compress. And if it won't compress, you have no adjustability with your valve or no adjustability with your roll lifter. It's either going to keep that valve cracked open, the, either exhaust or, or intake, whatever it happens to be. It's either going to keep, keep that cracked open or it's going to stay a little loose. And you'll let, in other words, the hydraulic system will not be taking up any slack that might be in your valve train, and you don't want that. So that means the lifter has to be replaced. I don't, I don't take them apart and try to service them. They're about $10. It's not even worth my time to try to fix a lifter. I just go to O'Reilly and buy another one. Um, I think Seal Power makes one. I don't know what the part number is. I'll put it in the description when I find out. But uh, I think it's about ten bucks for for a new lifter. So if I have a bad lifter, I just go get get a new one. But like I said, all of these are, are used lifters out of a junkyard, and uh, so I need to inspect them and make sure they compress about half the travel like they're supposed to, and uh, and make sure that that happens. So like I said, the process, what I'm about to do is adjust these valves and I'm going to chase the firing order. Look, I'll, I'll put a link to another video on how I do that. I'll chase the firing order and check the uh, condition of these used lifters as I go. So let me make one other statement about chasing the firing order. So right now, I know that number six, this, the cylinder number six is ready to adjust. How do I know that? Because now these valves are not adjusted right. or they have no, These are still, all, when I put them on, when I put these all these valves, uh, the, all this valve train together, I made sure that I, I, look, I left them loose. I didn't tie, I, let, I tied it down just where there was, they took out the plate, and then I loosened it back up a little bit because I didn't because I'm not ready to adjust them all tight. So I leave them a little loose. Now this one here is tight because right now, as I was rotating the engine, I was watching this this lifter here, which is exhaustor number one, was moved, was up, and as it went down, almost down to zero, I saw the intake start to move up. So what happens is the exhaust stroke just got completed and now the intake stroke has happened. So that tells me that number one cylinder just past top dead center is now on its way down. I don't know how much. It's, it's close to top dead center. I'm not sure. But it doesn't matter. If number one is close to top dead center, so is number six. So number one and number six are identical as far as the piston travel. So number six back here, I know I can adjust these two valves right now. And that's what I'm about to do. But as I adjust, I'm going to watch the lifters and see if they sink in. All right, here's a good example. I just tightened up. This will be six, uh, six um, intake. And I just tightened it up. Let me see if I can get a good picture of it. So right down in there, you can see how that plunger's moved down a little bit. It's moved down off the keeper. There's a little, look, a little wire keeper in there. And that plunger has moved down. Let me see if I can get a better look at it from right through there. You see it's not, it's, that plunger's not fully up in there touching that wire. So it's moved down a little bit. So if you look across here, let me see if I can get a picture of it. Um, it's that valve right there. I don't know if you can tell that. That valve, I'm trying to get a good angle here for you. That valve right, let me put my finger on it. Maybe. It's hard to tell. That valve, the top of this valve is a little bit lower than the others. So that means that valve is still compressed. So right now it's pushing against that plunger and that lifter, and and by the time I finish this uh, adjusting all these valves, this spring should have overpowered that lifter and pushed that lifter travel down, and then that means your lifter will be preset or preloaded. If this valve does not go go back up and stays down, and you look back over here, and that plunger's not dropping anymore, that means that that lifter's stuck and it's no good. You gotta replace it. Sorry, I'm trying to keep, do the camera. So um, after, when I, like I say, when I finish all these valves, I'm going to come back to this one. If that valve is still down, I know that this lifter has to be replaced. All right, I've just now adjusted cylinder number six, both the six intake and, or six intake and six exhaust. And um, <clears throat> both applications or both situations, the, the main springs went down a little bit, but they came back up and uh, came back up to the uh, 
the same height as the rest of them. So these valves are now preloaded. So now I'm going to move on to the next one in the firing order. So the firing order in the Chevrolet small block V8 is 18436. I just did six. 18436. So five is next. So five is right here. This is cylinder number five. You got one, three, and five. On the driver's side, odd, odd cylinders. One, three, five. So as I explained in a previous video about how I chase the firing order, all I have to do is rotate this engine 90 degrees from where it is now. And I know number five will be ready to adjust. It'll, it, there's a huge margin of error in doing this. All you've got to do is get 90, close to 90 degrees and you're good. Now you could verify that by looking at the opposing cylinder number five and see if the two lifters are rocking, but I'm not even going to bother. I, I just know that I've got the, the, the uh, torque wrench straight up and down right now. I'm going to move it over to the, right now it's at 12 o'clock. I'm going to move it to the 3 o'clock position. 90 degrees and I know number five will be ready to adjust. And then when I get ready, I'll put this back up at the top to back to 12, move it to three, and I'll know the next one after five is ready to adjust. So let me go ahead and do number five right now. Okay, I've just adjusted number five and I can see that those plungers and these lifters have moved way down on both the intake, the exhaust and the intake. I don't know if you can see that too well, but the plunger's way down below that piece of wire there. But the valves have leveled back off. They've come back up to where uh, they're level with the rest of them. So sometimes you'll find the plungers and the lifters move down easily and uh, they don't even offer any resistance. And that's probably because they, the oil is drained out of them and they don't offer any resistance from oil, oil being stuck in the lifter. That's how, that's how these lifters work. They, they trap oil beneath that plunger and um, they are filled up with oil from the oil cab in the engine, but they also bleed off oil very slowly. So when, they are, when they're pumped up by the engine, but they can't pump up and overpower this valve, this valve spring here. But they pump up and when to level off, they bleed, they bleed off oil very slowly. So over time, they just bleed off whatever oil was pumped up in there and they, they bounce out and they adjust everything and take all the slack out of it. And the bottom line is that these springs on the valve overpower the plunger spring in the, in the lifter. The, uh, the hydraulic oil pressure just fills in the gap, kind of like a shock absorber on a car. The shocks absorb the hard hit on the uh, suspension system, but after a little bit of time, they give and the, and the suspension moves. So that's how hydraulic valves work. So that was number five. So the next one in the firing order is, let's see, one, eight, one, eight, four, three, six, five, seven. So five, seven is next. So again, I'm gonna move this uh, torque wrench back to the top to 12 o'clock, move it down to three o'clock and just number seven. All right, I adjusted seven and now I'm on two. And it's been probably about a minute or so since I've adjusted uh, both two, two intake and two exhaust. And this is a good example of where I may have a bad lifter. So you can see how the two exhaust, this one right here, this is two exhaust. You can see how that spring has not popped back up all the way to the top. So it's, ha it's struggling to push that lifter down. That lifter may be stuck. Um, I'll have to come back to this. I don't know if you can see a good example of that, but you see. To my naked eyes, plain is clear that this valve, this valve here, is still down compared to the other one. Uh, there's one. Well, that was probably normal because it's it's not. You can't pay. You can't look at any other valves because they're not on top dead center on their firing structure. So ignore any other valve set. But that one, um, number, it's it's moving back up a little bit. It may be about to uh, move, move all the way to the top. So after I finish this entire process, I'm going to make a note and come back and check two, that's two E. Put, put it back on the top of the center on two and check two E again. So now I'm going to move on to see one, eight, four, three, six, five, seven, two, one is next. Okay, since I started adjusting these valves on cylinder number six, I just finished on cylinder number three, which is over here. So the cylinder three is right here. Um, Cause three is, uh, right after six in the firing order, or three is right before six in the firing order, one, eight, four, three, six. So I've now finished adjusting all these valves, and in the process, I determined that two exhaust and three exhaust seemed like they might have a problem. Two exhaust seemed like the lifter was stuck up and it was not gonna compress because this spring here was still down a little bit compared to the one next to it when that cylinder was on top dead center. So I made a note of it to come back and look at 2E when I'm done, and um, I went ahead and finished all the valves, and then I just now checked to it again, and it's okay. So it, it just took a little longer, but this, this strong spring here 
was able to push that valve, that rock arm up, which pushed that, that, uh, that lifter down in there. So the lifter was just a real strong lifter. It wasn't, it wasn't compressing very easily. So the only one left is number 3E, and the problem with 3E is that the plunger, even before I adjusted this, uh, this valve, the plunger seemed to be down off the spring seat uh, before I even put any pressure on it. And that typically means the lifter's stuck. So um, I went ahead and adjusted 3E, and it's tight now, but um, I may come back and redo that one uh, later on. But 3E, right now 3E is the only one that really uh, got my attention, so I'm going to keep an eye on it. And uh, I, may, I may loosen it up right now and then come back and, and see, if it, uh, see if the plunger, the point I'm trying to make is I, if I loosen 3E now and leave it loose and overnight, and when I come back tomorrow, that plunger should be all the way back at the top because it's had time to, the spring and the plungers had time to push it back up to, to its uh, highest travel. And that's where I want to start again by adjusting this lifter. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and loosen 3E and leave it loose overnight and then come back and inspect this lifter to make sure it's, it's, it's pushed itself all the way back up to the top. There's an internal spring in the lifter that would push it back to the top with no, with no pressure on it. So I'll do that now. and. Uh, Hope this video makes sense. Um, I did both uh, adjusted the valves using my chase the firing order method and also inspected the lifters as I did to make sure they were compressing and everything was working like it's supposed to. So thanks for watching and subscribe to my channel if you find these videos helpful.